Next, bringing care to women in a country whose medical facilities, already scarce, were destroyed by years of civil war. Special correspondent Fred de Sam Lazaro reports on the mission of one woman in Somaliland. It's part of his series, Agents for Change. She had a very easy delivery and delivered last night. It was a pretty typical day at the Edna Adan Hospital. Three babies had just been born, a half dozen high-risk women were in labor, several others were being treated for life-threatening illnesses, and at the center of it all, the hospital's founder and namesake, Edna Adan. These are the kind of women I built the hospital for anyway, anemic, a woman who's had previous complications, a woman who has a scar, a woman who has lost babies before. What's especially remarkable is where this is all taking place, in Hargeza, the capital of Somaliland, an enclave that declared its independence three decades ago from the war-torn Somalia, but is not recognized by the rest of the world. The region suffers from some of the world's highest rates of infant and maternal mortality. Adan was born here 79 years ago, the daughter of a prominent physician. At 17, she won a scholarship to study in England, becoming a midwife. She returned to Somalia, marrying a politician who would become prime minister. She's seen with him here and next to President Lyndon Johnson at a White House reception. She fled Somalia's civil war in the 1980s. When Edna Adan returned to her native Hargeza, the city lay in ruin from years of war. She was given a plot of land that had been used as a burial ground and on it laid the foundation for rebuilding the city's health care system. Most doctors had fled. Some had been killed. Adan had worked for the UN while in exile and used her savings and a fundraising campaign to build what had been a lifelong dream, a non-profit hospital and nursing school designed to specifically address the health needs of women. In 2002, she opened the 45-bed hospital, which has since doubled in size and grown to include an outpatient clinic and two surgical theaters. We've delivered 20,000 babies in the past 15 years. And uh, they, we have the lowest maternal mortality for a quarter of the national average. And it's still too many. We should, many of these women should not have been lost, should not have died but they bring them too late. Another factor in the high rate of maternal death and various complications in labor is female genital mutilation. Nearly 95% of young girls in this country are thought to be subjected to genital cutting. Adan has become an outspoken critic of the practice. My mission now is to talk to fathers. I'm blue in the face talking to mothers. But it's the mothers who are taking the daughters to have this done, right? And if your father says no, and put his foot down, there would be a chance that some of these girls would be saved. Space your child, yeah. happy, clean, healthy, well-fed. She has also become a vocal advocate for family planning in this conservative Islamic society. Adan planned to counsel this patient, who was rushed here by her husband the previous night, hemorrhaging badly after she miscarried what would have been her seventh baby. The first advice that we will tell her when she comes back for her post before she goes home is not to get pregnant. Is she in any way equipped to control that decision? Uh, that decision we usually do with the husband. Because at a moment like that, you see, it's somebody who's, who almost lost a wife. He ran with her. He brought her here. His wife's alive. He doesn't want to go through that again. The hospital does offer limited family planning services, most frequently implantable contraceptives for women. As Edna Adan's reputation has grown, so has its mission. The hospital now treats men, and it brings in physicians and surgeons from the U.S. and other countries who volunteer to do specialized procedures, treating patients with cleft palate and hydrocephalus, among other things, all free of charge. You see, they're, they're totally conjoined. Sometimes all the hospital can offer is compassion. This pair of eight-month-old twins, conjoined at the heart, were discharged from another hospital soon after they were born. There's, they're not going to find oxygen anywhere else. So whatever we can do palliatively, we will do. 
but surgery is totally out of the question. So it's palliative, palliative care until nature until takes nature its course. Yeah, God makes that decision. I, I don't want to be the one that switches it off. In a region where roads are poor to non-existent, getting to a Hargeza hospital can be daunting. So Adan has a team of midwives and nurses to treat women and children in the vast rural areas of Somaliland. Khadan Abdullahi was in the first class of midwives to graduate. We watched as she helped vaccinate newborn babies at a small clinic in Abdi Adan. And then teach a prenatal class on nutrition for these pregnant women at a refugee camp. Uh, Adna is a role model for myself. Adna is a role model for you? Yeah, myself, yes. 30-year-old Dr. Shukri Muhammad Dahir was also trained as a nurse and midwife by Edna Adan. She went on to become a physician and surgeon and is now back practicing at the Adan Hospital. She says initially patients weren't sure about the idea of a woman in that job. Like when I'm dealing with an emergency case, they used to say, oh, you are a female and you are going to operate this lady, maybe she will die. That idea is, it still exists but it's not as strong as when I graduated. Although she's groomed new doctors and midwives, Edna Adan, almost 80, has not chosen a successor. And I have 800 graduates from various courses. And I have thousands of people whose lives I've touched. And they're all my children. And I'm still looking for someone who's crazy enough to say, I'll look after them for you, the way you did. If only for that reason, Edna Adan says, she has no plans to slow down anytime soon. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Fred de Sam Lazaro in Hargeza, Somaliland. And what an inspiration she is. Fred's reporting is part of the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.